The spleen is a very blood-rich organ. It's about the size of your fist. And it's located in the left side of your abdominal cavity, just below the stomach. So the spleen is the largest lymphoid organ that we have. It's encased by a fibrous capsule and also trabeculae, similar to what we learned for the lymph node. And its main functions are that it's a site for the growth of lymphocytes, so for lymphocyte proliferation, and also immune surveillance and response. However, it also has a blood function. It cleanses the blood of aged blood cells and platelets. And so there's two types of pulp in it, which we'll talk about in just one second. The three additional functions of the spleen are that it stores breakdown products of red blood cells, specifically iron for later reuse. It stores platelets and monocytes for release into the blood when needed. And so these two areas within the spleen, histologically, they're referred to as white pulp and red pulp. The white pulp is going to be the site for the immune function, and specifically it contains mostly lymphocytes, and the red pulp is where the old blood cells and pathogens are destroyed. So this image shows what the spleen looks like, you can see there's a splenic artery and a splenic vein. Both are located at the hilum. And in this zoomed in image here, if we blow it up just a little bit, we can see the outer capsule, the trabeculae, and the red pulp and the white pulp. So you should be able to identify those two different um, types of pulp histologically in your lab. And we can see on this slide, there is an image of the spleen on the upper left corner. But also in the lower right, we see what would be in a micrograph. So I want you to notice, first of all, that there's this outer capsule. And we can see very concentric regions where the white pulp exists. And again, that's the immune function. There's going to be a lot of lymphocytes in that region. And the remaining region of the spleen is red pulp. So we don't see the concentric region. And that's where the storage of old red blood cells are, specifically the iron. So our next slide is showing something called MALT. And MALT stands for mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue. It's regions of lymphoid tissue that's kind of strategically located where there's a chance of a lot of pathogens entering the body to protect us. So it makes perfect sense as far as where it's at. For example, there is discrete lymphatic nodules in the digestive tract, for example, and they're located there because it's more likely that there's harmful bacteria that might be present in food that we've digested compared to other systems. Other collections of this malt are found in the tonsils, the Peyer's patches, that's the small intestine, and the appendix. So we're gonna look at those in the next few slides. This slide is showing the tonsils, and the tonsils is a very simple lymphoid organ. You've heard uh, people say that they've had their tonsils removed, for example. The tonsils that are sometimes removed are the pharyngeal tonsils, and they're also called the adenoids, and they're located in the posterior wall of the nasopharynx. So what's significant about this is the epithelium here is a little different than the palatine tonsil, because of where it's located at. The palatine tonsil would be at the posterior end of the oral cavity. So there's two other types. There's lingual tonsils and tubal tonsils. And the overlying epithelium is going to fold inward. It invaginates to form what are called tonsillar crypts. And again, this epithelium, it's a little different specifically in the pharyngeal tonsil, but um, 
the palatine is very similar to the rest of them. So we're going to see on the next slide the palatine tonsil and the histology of it. So I want to zoom in here to specifically show you the outer layer, which would be the epithelium. And this epithelium is non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. And the reason that's important is because this is an area where there could be damage to the epithelium. It's at the beginning of the oral cavity, so there's lots of layers here. But since it's inside the body, it, does, it doesn't have that protein keratin. And when we look at the bottom of this slide, we can see the germinal cells in the lymphoid follicles, also called the nodules. They're very, very dense in the tonsils. So it's important that you realize some of these um, histological differences for lab. Our next slide is showing another location of malt called the Pyers patches. And the Pyers patches are aggregated lymphoid nodules throughout the small intestine specifically. And what this basically means is there's clusters of lymphoid follicles, also called aggregated lymphoid nodules. So it means the same thing. And it's at the distal end of the small intestine. So that would be the ileum more specifically. So if we zoom in on this histology, we can see specific follicles of the Pyers patches here. And that would be in the lining that's closer to the mucosa. The mucosa would be in this area. So again, that's why they call it mucosa associated lymphatic tissue. So in this other example of malt, we see the appendix. And the appendix is an offshoot of the first part of the large intestine. And it contains a large number of lymphoid follicles. So its job is to destroy bacteria. So it kind of works like the Pyers patches, prevents them from breaching the intestinal wall. It also can generate memory lymphocytes. So our next couple slides are on the thymus. And the thymus is a primary lymphoid organ. And it's very important and it's, it's especially active and largest in the size during childhood because that's where the T cells are going to start to mature. So getting closer to adulthood, that's when the thymus starts to decrease in size. And there's a protein that's, an, or, um, it's a hormone um, called thymosin that is produced by the thymus and it promotes the activity of the lymphocytes. The thymus is located um, in the in inferior neck region, extends into the mediastinum, and it's broken into lobules that divide into an outer cortex and an inner medulla. So the cortex, it is going to contain rapidly dividing lymphocytes and the thymosin that I mentioned, the hormone, it's very important because it promotes the lymphocytes to become what are called immunocompetent. So this is a histology view of the thymus. And I'd like you to notice the pink structures with the onion-like appearance, specifically. And those, that would be the thymic corpuscles. And then finally, on our last slide, we have a summary of the lymphoid organs here. And let's look at the functions of each of these areas. So we'll zoom in to look at the lymph nodes first. It cleanses the lymph. It's a site for lymphocyte activation and proliferation. The spleen, the largest lymphoid organ, has a dual function lymphoid activation and proliferation, but it also um, has an immune function. Then we have finally the malt and the 
T cell, site of T cell maturation. That's the thymus. So that's the part, the organ that's only large during child development. And again, it's going to atrophy into adulthood.